This channel's filmed in front of a live studio audience. How did you do the rain? <laughs> I think I have a better way of doing this. Cut! We good? We got it? Uh, We're good. Cool. Everybody, let's take an hour. So I've been waiting for the A7S III for a while now, yes. and I decided to take matters into my own hands. I call this the K-A7S III. Now, since we have an hour break, I think we should go outside and see what this puppy can do. It is so nice to be outside, but let's talk about this thing for a second. So this can shoot 8K 120. It has super fast autofocus, including eye and face tracking and it also has amazing low light performance. So this is pretty much the greatest camera ever made. So let's try it out. All right, so this thing is way better than I anticipated and I love it, um, but I think we should go inside because I'm starting to not be able to feel my fingers and I really want to see this footage. Let's go. So what do you guys think? The K-A7S III is pretty awesome, huh? All right, all right, I'll come clean. I actually ended up receiving my camera a few weeks ago and due to the fact that I had never held a Sony camera until now, I didn't want to do your cliche camera unboxing. Not to mention I've been staring at that camera crochet pattern for weeks. Anyways, like I said, a couple weeks ago was the first time I had ever held a Sony camera in my hand. And there has been a slight learning curve since switching over from Canon, that's for sure. But after using it a ton in the last video, I've really started to get comfortable with it. I'm also not going to pretend that I'm all of a sudden a Sony expert. And because of that, I'm only going to briefly talk about some of the things I've noticed so far. First off, I cannot believe how great the image was coming out of this thing. I mean, I guess it's easy to be impressed coming from a three-year-old Canon 6D Mark II to this. It's not even really comparable. Obviously, the Sony 4K image is going to destroy a dated Canon HD sensor, but man, the image is gorgeous in my opinion. Full disclosure though, I still do prefer the colors that Canon reproduces much, much more. There is definitely that weird green tinge that everybody talks about. People say that it's improved, I really don't know. I've never had anything to base it on since I've never shot Sony before. But I noticed a huge difference in color between the two cameras, and like I said, I much prefer the colors that came out of the Canon. But it's not that big of a deal. It's easily fixed in post, and it just takes a little bit more time. Another thing that was a jaw dropper was its low light performance. I mean, clean images at ISO 12,800? <laughs> That's such a useful feature. It opens the doors for smaller productions that maybe don't have the budgets or access to bigger lighting packages, or documentary filmmakers that don't always have the time to set up the lighting they need to get their shots. I mean, to still be able to capture useful and usable content while working at those ISO levels is just crazy. And definitely something new to me. I would have never gone above ISO 1000 while shooting video on any other camera I've ever owned. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the autofocus performance. Once again, the leaps that have been made in the past couple of years have been amazing. The tracking feature on the A7S III and ability to maintain focus in low light was phenomenal. I remember being wowed by Canon's dual pixel AF and the face tracking when I first got it and tried it out. But wow, this just blows that out of the water. And to be very clear, this is not a Canon versus Sony thing, not at all. The current Canon autofocus that's in the R5, R6, and the cinema line continues to be superior to anything else out there from what I've seen and what I've read. This is more for the people who are in the same situation that I was, having an older camera and wondering if there had been enough progress in the tech to justify the upgrade. So yeah, I'm super stoked to be finally using this thing. I say that as I'm using my 6D to shoot this. But yeah, going forward, I'm super excited to learn my way around this thing and hopefully make some super cool content with it. So be sure to check out next week's video. I 
hope next week's video, I'm trying to get faster with these, where we're going to check out Condor Blue's new A7S III cage, as well as all of the super cool rigging options they have available. Hopefully we'll be able to turn this little guy into a proper filmmaking machine. Until next time, I'm Chris. See ya.